Hello friends, I am Harish Sippy, founder of Tima India Limited. I am really privileged today to be here to present this paper, PVP. I've done this so many times, but I've never felt this privileged before. I guess the times are changing. They're making us work hard. I'm going to be 75 very soon. But I really want to work hard. We are into shell and tube heat exchanges. I have been at it for 50 years. But I still have a lot to learn. And I am going to live till I learn. Shell and tube heat exchanges, yes. The most critical area is the tube sheet to tube joint. It involves the entire technology. Even the accuracy of the baffle holes and alignment is very, very important for a tube to tube sheet joint. How is it connected? There'll be stress corrosion at places, vibration at others. My experience is telling me that Accuracy is of prime importance. Yes, the baffle hole accuracy, the accuracy of the entire tube bundle is very important. Coming back to the joint, I believe in something which is not a normal practice. Talking about dissimilar metals and the pressure being so high that you have to line with another metal is a technology in itself. The conventional method is to line the tube sheet first. I would say it's very good if you do it with the end plates, not with the tube sheets. While you're watching this presentation, I am compelled to say what my experience tells me. My experience tells me that every time I have done differently, it has given me much better results. What happens in the conventional method? You are joining two dissimilar metals. So, the root of the problem is the root in itself. And what happens if you drill holes? Even if the UT acceptable standards are there, the tolerance levels have been met with. You can get into a problem in most of the joints. Why do I say that? The defect which is tolerated, which is within the tolerance, happens to be very close to the surface or on the surface where you have drilled the holes. Sometimes we can repair those, the other times it's not feasible to even spot them because they're very close to the surface and not on the surface. At such times, when you try to fuse a wire, the heat affected zone will bring out the defects. For that matter, Shell and tube heat exchanger has a maximum nuisance value. It's very difficult to understand this exchanger because every time it serves a different purpose. Coming back to the subject, the conventional method I feel is not right to use because we've done root cause analysis for every failure that's occurred. And uh, to be honest, most of them fail, either soon after putting them into service or in years to follow. Tube bundle is the most sensitive part of an exchanger and it's also the most valuable part. But we need to replace those so very often. I'm proud to announce in my company, till date, we have not had to replace a single tube bundle, although we have kept a track of all of them. 
So I strongly feel what has given me 100% results, we should go by that and we would like to go by that and hence this paper has been presented. And I'm so thankful that it has been accepted to be presented. Thank you very much. I will quickly show you one slide and not get into the details which you can always read. All these are the tests that we have conducted, without which we wouldn't have been here. All this has been done. I don't want to bore you with what is already given. It's very clear. We can see in the cladded one, in the conventional one, the size of the weld, the leak path is 2.41, whereas here, where we are just welding the tube directly to the tube sheet with a suitable consumable, which is the acceptable consumable because the tube sheet is lined with that. That we would weld directly to the tube sheet. For example, a stainless steel tube to a carbon steel tube sheet, the base metal. The consumables are very reliable. And however, the very root run is tested vigorously. Thereafter, the leak path is much more. It goes up to 7.65 millimeters. So why should this not be preferred? Definitely from the quality point of view. I have talked about being economical. Yes, to me it is economical. Because uh, labor expenses don't mean much here. Plus, this can also be automated. So why not choose the best path, best for the quality? And the economics of several places, several companies will be different here. However, for us, it'll even come out to be cheaper in time to come, once we start this practice. After this, it's conclusion drawn. I don't want to go through this. I want your conclusions drawn. Please send me all the issues with this, all the questions. I would love to, I would love to answer them. It will be a great knowledge for me. So, I will allow you to draw conclusions. Thank you very much.